Beidou is one of the base roster 4 stars, and as such, she is compared to the likes of Singcho, Bennett, and Fischl, and often considered not as good as them. But the reality is that Beidou, although slightly more restrictive and niche than those mentioned previously, is extremely broken in her own right, and is often a powerful and valuable choice to invest in for your account. She's got quite a few misconceptions and intricacies within her kit, so I'm going to do my best to break it all down for you to help you decide if she's worth building for you and how to get the most out of her if you do. Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. Today's sponsor is Pocket Champs. In this highly polished mobile game phenomenon, with an incredible 4.7 out of 5 star review on the App Store, you can race against other players and train up your own little champ. You can coach it and train it in various abilities to make it stronger and faster. Make sure to strategize and find the best race strategy and gadget selection for the various environments, whether it be running, swimming, climbing, and more. There's plenty of different maps apps and gadgets that offer you plenty of new challenges and once you've trained them up all you have to do is sit back and watch the race. What I personally love most about this game is the super cute character designs and tons of customization options that you can unlock and collect along with that great feeling of progression for unlocking new items with already 40 different ones in the game and tons more on the way. And the best part is all of the content in the game and the game itself is available just by playing for free. Free. There's also brand new content that comes out every single month, so you're sure to always have something exciting and new to challenge with your champ. It's honestly a super cute and wholesome game, and I'm very happy to have teamed up with them to get you guys a starter pack with 500 gems and the monkey skin, which is adorable. Click on the link in the description or scan the QR code in the corner to download the game, and you'll get the rewards automatically added to your account. This bonus content is worth $15 and it's available only during this month until November 30th. So make sure to hurry up and download now. Thanks again to Pocket Champs for sponsoring this video. Beto is an off-field Electro Claymore damage dealer who specializes in extremely strong offensive output through her burst. She is one of the strongest characters in the game in two target scenarios and still strong in AoE in general because of the way her chain lightning works passing back and forth between enemies, dealing damage each time it does so. It is such a large amount of damage that as I said, she's often one of the strongest characters in the game for these two target scenarios, which are actually more common than you'd think in high floors of the abyss. Not only does her burst do a ton of damage, it also has significant defensive utility, providing a noticeable amount of damage reduction of 35%, as well as a significant resistance interruption boost for your on-field character, and both of these effects can stack with other damage reduction and other resistance to interruption. As if that wasn't enough, she also gets a small shield from her Constellation 1, which, while not super relevant on its own, is a great bonus to the previously mentioned utility and stacks with that previously mentioned damage resistance, which, when considering everything together, actually makes her quite the defensive powerhouse for a character that does so much damage. She also has the ability to snapshot buffs onto her burst, which means that she retains the buffs when she's off field, even if most characters normally wouldn't. So things like Thrilling Tales or Bennett's attack buff are super beneficial to her. Although extremely strong, her burst has two relevant weaknesses. One of which that it's very ineffective in single target scenarios, and the other being that her high energy cost limits her team synergies as it's hard to build her to be self-sufficient while doing still a ton of damage. Still though, just using her when AoE is the more relevant type of damage is an easy fix to that first con, and the fact that she requires other characters of the same element to help battery her is by no means a con unique to her. Plenty of characters rely on others to help them shine. It is a team game after all. Beto's skill is one of the few counters in the game. And while some tunnel vision on this and try to make main DPS Beto, which is something you can totally do for the overworld, by the way, for high level content, it's usually better to use her skill and perfect parry mechanic as a side benefit and a way to deal some extra damage and charge up her burst fast, as the perfect parry does both of these things. Getting the perfect parry with her skill is what allows her to make the most of her passives, which give more damage and enhances her charge attacks. 
The charge attack playstyle again is generally inferior to just using her as an off-field burst DPS, but it's still good and viable for the overworld. There are ways to make this work in the Abyss, such as Aggravite playstyles, which we will talk about a bit later, and although it's not optimal, I will give you a couple thoughts on how to best make this work, potentially. Her final pro is that it's only her C2 that's her best constellation, and it is a big one, often being a 40% total team damage boost when she's used on the right team in the right scenario. Being only C2 though, it's not hard to get great value from this constellation, and although her other constellations are not useless by any means and still provide a good damage boost, her C2 is the biggest jump by far. For teams for Beto, the first one I want to recommend is her Aggravate team. It has the huge benefit of being basically a four star only team, which although I have Baiju here, it's actually more common and just as good if not better to use Yao Yao as your Dendro unit as she provides a little bit more AoE of Dendro application. And since this team is mostly an AoE team, you can use Yao Yao or Baiju interchangeably. This basically functions just like any Aggravate team where its main goal is to drive Fischl because she does so much damage from her A4 as you can aggravate every single one. But unlike using Kaching, Yaimiko or Sino or even Lisa or someone else for your aggravate driver, you're actually using Beto to drive Fischl, while a mix of Beto and Sucrose, because Beto obviously is going to be your off-field character, and Sucrose is going to be used on-field. This means that you have very good grouping, very good aggravate uptime, because it's a quick swap team, you are free to swap into Beto to use her skill whenever you can. Overall, I think this is probably one of the most underrated free-to-play teams in the entire game. It doesn't require insane skill to play. Three of the units are completely free, Yao Yao being able to be chosen from the Lantern Rite event, and Beto and Fischl being available in the shop. Sucrose is the only character you need here, and you don't have to use Sucrose. You can definitely use something like Lynette, especially if you do happen to have C6 Lynette, and you can also use Kazuha, especially if you have Sacrificial Sword on him, so you can get more aggravate procs to take up the field time, and if you have C1, even better, but it's not required. Overall, this is just an insanely good free-to-play team, and can almost Almost always be your choice for the AoE side of the Abyss. The only time when it might not work as well is when elemental checks are really prevalent and you need some sort of specific element to clear the Abyss, but otherwise this is just what I think is just a staple free-to-play team. It also is so good because it doesn't require Sing Cho. It doesn't require a Hydro unit at all. It doesn't require Bennett, so you're free to use any of those characters on your other side, making team building extremely easy. Really can't sing the praises of this team enough. I neglected playing it properly for a long time. One of the biggest mistakes I made and still make to this day was not using Beto's skill exactly every 7.5 seconds. That's a big tip to make this team run as smoothly as it should. That means you can get away with way less ER on Beto and allow her to build much more damage. Overall, amazing team. She's also really good on Novelette teams because Novelette has a little bit of resistance interruption built into his kit. Stacked with Beto's resistance interruption on her burst, you're going to resist quite Quite a lot of attacks, not every attack. There are definitely really strong and powerful attacks that a lot of bosses especially have, but because this is a Beto team, you're not really using it in single target scenarios. And most AOE bosses don't deal heavy enough attacks to stagger Novelette out of his charge attacks, and you can mitigate things by dodging around. So it might be might require a little bit more skill to make work against really aggressive enemies, or it may just be unpractical for certain times. Regardless, when you can make it work, it will be extremely strong. If you do happen to have C1 Novelette, obviously that completely fixes this issue. And overall, this is just an extremely, extremely strong team. One that I definitely underrated when I first played it. And as I've been playing Novelette more and more, I've been getting better and better and liking it more and more. However, it still does have those caveats. So just make sure you're aware of them. One of the basic team building tips for Beto is to make sure you're using her with another Electro character if you don't want to have to put a ton of ER. So she's often paired with Fischl. But if you do want to swap Fischl for a different character, Character or Kazuo for a different character, you totally can. Just be aware of Beto's ER needs when building around your teams. These teams, again, aren't set in stone. There's tons more options than we're going to talk about here, but hopefully it inspires you to give you some ideas. And this doesn't have to be caught. The other team that you can use her on is a Hyper Bloom team. Now, it may seem a little bit counterintuitive at first, 
because the way Beto's electro application works is it bounces between the enemies. It doesn't have this AOE effect that procs hyper blooms, but that actually ends up being good because all of the hyper blooms can be procced by the character that you actually want to the proc the hyper bloom, such as Kuki. So basically, she ends up being the fourth slot in your hyper bloom core. But this has a really nice benefit of being an amazing fourth slot when you want to use hyper bloom in two target or plus scenarios. Generally, if you're going to use hyper bloom on a more AOE focused side of the abyss, and that gives her a niche, and she really patches up the fact that hyper bloom doesn't have the greatest AoE, but if you're using it in two target scenarios, Beto just, this team feels like it's like it's an AoE team, even though it's actually not doing AoE damage for the most part, except for Beto. So she really, really does add to this team when the content is good for Beto. And I do want to just clarify, it's not only two target scenarios that she's good in. She's good in all AoE scenarios. It's just that two target is where she shines the most. You can use her as a replacement for Fischl in aggravate teams, but generally is going to be a downgrade. But if you say don't want to use Fischl, you're using Fischl on the other side, and you're fighting an AoE chamber of the Abyss, Beto is actually a suitable replacement. You can also use her on spread focus teams like Alhytham, although I personally would prefer Fischl or Yaimiko or something else in the final slot. This isn't something that I would really run, but it is something you can do. Now we can get into one of the common cores for Beto, which is the Beto Singcho Fischl core. The combination between Beto and Singcho is really, really a nice synergy because not only does Electro Charge do a lot of damage, but the resistance interruption that Beto and Singcho both provide, along with the damage mitigation they both provide, along with Beto's shield, along with the tiny healings you get from Sing Cho, means you're mitigating something like 95% of the damage or some, something like that. Like you basically don't take damage at all with this team because Sing Cho you get 40 some, some odd percent, Beidou you get 35%, so it's already 75%, plus the heal, the little bit of healing from Sing Cho, plus the shield. Overall, you feel basically immortal as long as you use everyone's stuff off of cooldown and there's not those little bits of downtime in between where you get hit. Fischl obviously provides energy for Beidou and then your final character, well, I have Yoimiya in this slot because it's kind of like a way to make Yoimiya work better in AoE scenarios. But more often you're going to be running Sucrose in this final slot because she's going to shred the resistance to both Hydro and Electros. They can both exist on the enemy. And this is the Taser team and it is really, really good. Again, the biggest mistake people make and that I made is not swapping into Beto every 7.5 seconds to reset her skill so that you can build her on more damage so that the team does a ton of damage. The other nice thing about this team is although Beto doesn't work that well in single target, Sing Cho and Fischl have really strong single target performance. And so just Sucrose per driving those two, as long as it's well invested in, this team can brute force its way through single target content, even if it's not made for it. Another variant of the Taser team is with Kokomi. This version is really, really good against Abysses such as the new one that just started over, where you actually have not only aggressive enemies, but corrosion or something that actually drains your HP. So having an actual healer like Kokomi is very important. Keep in mind that my Kokomi is pretty underinvested and I'm not swapping out properly properly to funnel Beto. And so my team play, my per play, my performance is pretty subpar compared to most of my Abyss clears. I've neglected actually practicing Beto for a long time and I've finally seen the light, you guys, don't worry. But the actual play is not optimized. So just remember that if you actually learn this character and put in play the advice that I'm giving you and maybe watching some other clears online as well, you can vastly outperform the clears that you're seeing me doing in the footage. You can also use Ayato as the driver, although this is a much more dangerous version because now you don't have Sing Cho for the damage mitigation, you don't have Kokomi for the healing. It's sort of a glass cannon build, but in the right abyss, this can still do very, very well. I used it for all the floors up until floor 12 and it worked magnificently. The problem of course being that we have corrosion, so you can't get away without a healer in this particular abyss, but it can still really work with Ayato here. And finally, you can use Beto as a Eula enabler because she'll obviously provide that that electro for superconduct that Eula needs. Just keep in mind, you'll likely need both an ER Sands and probably an ER weapon as well, because I'm not sure that you can get two skills per rotation. You might be able to, one right after you switch out of Eula and right one right before you go back into Eula. That might that might work, I'm not sure. Comment below if you use Beto with Eula often, but you're gonna need to build a lot of ER on Beto regardless. And she doesn't generate as much energy as official or Raiden for Eula, so keep that in mind. Obviously, Shenha and Zhongli are flex slots here, but she would be a superior choice to Fischl once you have her energies taken care of in AoE scenario because Fischl is so strictly tied to single target that if you're using Eula on an AoE side, then Beto is going to be your choice. Overall, tons of great teams, tons of great free to play teams. Now let's talk about how to build her.
For her build guide, starting with level, she's one of the characters that you don't have to take to level 90. Obviously, when you're min-maxing and you're maining Beto, and you want to get the most damage possible, especially if you're using her on aggravate teams, taking her level 90 is great to do. But it's not as important as, obviously, the animal characters, the hyper bloom trigging, triggering characters, the hydro characters, part of Nilu teams, or even as Fischl, because Beto doesn't do as many aggravates, even in aggravate teams, as characters like Fischl. She does mostly talent damage, so you want to focus your reason versus onto talents first then leveling. Obviously, you need to ascend fully so that you can level her talents. And that's another point of consideration. My clears only have her at level 8 talents for her burst and only level 9 talents, level 6 talents, sorry, for her skill. So she's actually pretty underinvested in. When I invest further in her, which I definitely will, you'll see the clears definitely increase because she does so much talent damage. If you're going to play her, definitely get it to at least 8 for the, for the skill and at least level 9 for the burst. She has huge multipliers for her burst you definitely want to take advantage of them the priority is obviously burst first then skill then you can leave normal attacks alone unless you're doing an on-field aggravate play style in which case you basically will use the same aggravate team you'll just spend more time on her using her charge attacks which when you get some constellations do apply some electro i'll talk about that more in just a sec for weapons her best overall is actually going to be the serpent spine if you can get it to refinement five it's amazing even just at refinement one my favorite using for my favorite reason for using the serpent spine is because it's the spine of a serpent that was slayed in the ocean and i like to think that this is the serpent that beto slayed with her crew before she got her vision i just think that that's really a sick headcanon so let me know if you've had the same thought and don't you dare tell me if that's proven wrong somehow for other weapons the wolf's gravestone is a great choice the unforged usually won't work that well because she's not shielded beacon of the reed sea is a great weapon for beto i wouldn't be surprised if this calced out as one of her very best weapons because i think she should be able to do both passives the attack will be increased by 20% for 8 seconds after an elemental skill hit, so she'll definitely get that one, because you're going to be refreshing her skill every 7.5 seconds, so perfect. And after the character takes damage, the attack will be increased by 20% for 8 seconds, so she won't, and she'll be generally taking damage if you can perfect parry. So I think she should get both of those stacks, if I'm not mistaken. For 4 star weapons, obviously, as we said, the Serpent Spine is going to be, for 4 star weapons, as I said, the Serpent Spine is going to be her best choice. She takes full advantage of the passive, which gives a ton of damage bonus. Remember to put her first in your party and stack the and stack all the stacks before you start the abyss chamber also something i didn't do while i was testing so even though i have it refinement five i was using it worse than if, if it was at rank one so again that will greatly increase your clear times as well if you happen to play during the event of the luxurious sea lord and you want to use big fish that's one of her better four star options as well if you happen to wish on weapon banners that had the aquamaru and you have it a high refinement that's going to be a great choice really close to the serpent spine most of the time if you're using an aggravate team an elemental mastery weapon like the mailed flower or the aquamarine can be solid choices and the prototype archaic can be a solid free-to-play choice although ideally you'd swap it out for one of the other ones that we've talked about up till now if she's solo electro also you can consider an er weapon like the skyward pride maybe on eula teams or something like that but most of the time you'll want to stay away from er weapons and deal with damage weapons instead for artifacts emblem of severed fates is definitely her best set if you don't have it you can go for two-piece electro and two-piece attack or if you're playing aggravate two-piece elemental mastery but keep in mind that she doesn't get anything from elemental mastery if you're not using her in aggravate team so generally attack is advised she'll always need at least the 20 percent energy recharge so it's generally a good choice to go for for main stats you'll either want to go with attack or energy recharge for her sands i was using energy recharge but if you play properly and have a few er substats on your pieces and you're actually using her right and using her skill off cooldown and actually getting some perfect parries here and there you'll need less energy recharge and going for a energy recharge sands is going to be a waste of damage. You'll always want to go with electro damage bonus for her goblet and crit rate or crit damage, whatever gets you closer to a one to two ratio. Obviously, I should be going crit damage on this build. Yeah. For ER, you'll want to generally have about 140. Jeez, that's way too much. For ER, you'll generally want to have 140, 150 when you're using her with someone like Fischl. And if you're using her solo electro, probably, I have no idea, somewhere closer to 200, something like that. For constellations, her C1 is the one that gives you the shield. Her 
C2, the lightning arc can jump to two additional targets. That doesn't necessarily mean more targets in quantity. It also means it can jump between two targets more times. So you just get way more damage from it. C3 gives you skill levels, which is not super, super valuable. C4 gives her normal attacks electro damage. So you can use this for her on-field play style and aggravate teams. More of a meme build, but go ham if you want to. C5 is her burst, which contributes to meaningful damage. And C6 decreases electro res. Not as relevant most of the time because normally your animal character is doing this through VV already, but it's still a nice damage boost. Overall, she gets something like a 60% team damage increase on the teams that she's good in from her constellation. So they are very, very relevant. And that's a lot of damage increase. It just goes to show how much team damage Beto actually does when she's used on the right team. versus others. This is a pretty interesting topic because there's very few other characters that fulfill her role exactly because she is an off-field damage dealer that's Electro. So you'd think that she'd compete with Fischl. But the way that she actually competes is more along the lines of an on-field character because you still have to sort of build your team around making use of her. Her burst, I should have included this in the con sections, but that's okay. Her burst only procs from burst state. They don't count as normal in charge attacks, so they don't proc Beto's burst, which is really, really annoying. And you could say that that's Raiden's fault for not, for not doing that, but whatever it is, it makes her team building a bit more restrictive. She needs so much energy, so you can't, you kind of have to build the team around her just like you have to build a team around Sino or build a team around Kaching or build a team around Yaimiko or build a team around Hu Tao or Yoimiya. She's not a character that can just slot into any teams. You have to make sure that she fits into those teams. And being an electro damage dealer, she's competing with Yaimiko, with Raiden, with Kaching, with Sino more than she's competing with Fischl. She's often used in tandem with Fischl. But given that she's a four star, she does so much damage. She has such strong teams and she increases the quality of life the with the damage mitigation, the resistance to interruption. I think she's a very strong character. I think that her, if she could deal even remotely comparable damage to single target enemies, she would be widely considered a top tier character and always mentioned in the same breath alongside characters like Fischl, like Shangling. But because she has this sort of restriction to AoE, it just limits her versatility. But as long as you understand her in that context and use her properly in that context, she really is one of the strongest characters in the game. And I'll do future prospects right now because it just seems to fit. There just doesn't seem to be a perfect partner for Beto. Like, of course, the Aggravate team is perfect, but it kind of feels like there should be maybe an Electro onfielder that can battery her properly. Like if, like if Raiden just worked with her, she would be the perfect partner for Beto, and that would be just a match made in heaven. So I think it's possible anyways that in the future, more characters come out that can on-field while she off-fields, and they can drive her and battery her and utilize that damage. I think there's a there's plenty of potential for Beto to get even better in the future. I think her future prospects are looking great. I think that there just haven't been as many characters as you'd expect to synergize with an off-field damage dealer, especially since Aggravate really made Fischl look good, not as much Beto. I actually think that there's really good potential for Farina to be able to work with Beto in the future. If we can get an on-field Electro that works with Farina, then you can do something like that on-fielder along with Farina, along with Beto, along with Jean, or maybe a future animal healer character that's coming. Really what's in my mind is Chlorand. If Chlorand can synergize with Beto and complete that team with Farina, that would just be, that That just seems so sick to me. Um, I didn't mention this in my team section, but I did play around with Kokomi, Farina, Beto, and Kazuo, and I really, really liked it. The main problem being that you needed an ER, a lot of ER on Beto, so probably that ER Sans for that team. But it actually is a super, super powerful team. And if you have Farina and Kokomi, I highly recommend trying it out in AoE. I really, really like it. That would be this team right here. Big, big fan. For overworld and aesthetic, as with most burst focused characters, she is a can be a bit tricky to use in the overworld because her burst requirements are so high, but her on-field potential is much better in the overworld and you can get a lot more skill uses and normal and charge attack uses with your Beto. So I actually think that she's a pretty good overworld character. You just have to pretty, you have to switch up how you're actually using her and focus a bit more on those normal and charge attacks versus just focusing on filling up her burst and then swapping off of her. So I think if you love Beto, there's definitely great things 
you can do for her in the overworld to make her work for you. And you can, of course, just run ER weapon, ER sands, and then always have her burst permanently uptime. And enemies are so weak that they're going to go down anyways. And aesthetic, obviously, one of the coolest characters in the game. Looks amazing. Super badass. Captain of a ship. Defeated the serpent before she even got a vision. So sick. Love it. Get Beto. If you're in the mood for more creative teams, check out this video right here. Hopper Bloom is real. It's one of the funniest teams in the game. Go watch this video right now. And also, if you're enjoying the content, remember to check out Pocket Champs and give it a download to help me and the channel out. It's sponsors like this that allow me to continue making these videos for you guys. Thanks to Pocket Champs once again.